Hi everyone and welcome to Fridays with Fenning. You know, misunderstandings happen all the time between people and it's inevitable. Why? Well, because we view the world from different perspectives and we feel loved and valued in different ways. A man called Gary Chapman, a counsellor and author, explained about the five different love languages, five ways of expressing and receiving love and that everyone has a dominant love language. Let me, let me explain. About 20 years ago, uh, a TV drama called The Swap was shown on ITV, where a family have swapped their house with a man in Australia for two or three weeks. And it was the first time that I'd ever noticed clearly that the husband and wife were speaking very different love languages, and it was destroying their marriage. Honestly, they were almost at breaking point. And in one part, uh, the husband, Tom, who's on holiday, uh, is on his phone to the office and his business isn't doing well. And his wife, Jen, is so cross because he's talking work on their family holiday. Uh, and she complains and he turns to her and he says this. He says, but I'm doing this for you. And she looks away disgusted and they have a row. Uh, and they're both speaking different love languages, but not understanding each other. So husband Tom is wanting to express his love through providing for his wife and his family. He's giving up holiday time to ensure that he can provide for the family and give them all that they need. Yet all he gets is criticism for it. And he goes out and he buys her flowers as, as a gift just to be able to say sorry. And she rejects them and he feels like giving up and he says, what's the point? And Jen, the wife, well, she feels neglected and unloved and desperately wants quality time with her husband, Tom. That's what this holiday was going to give them, time for them to be together, to relax and talk and have a bit of focused time with each other. And yet work invades that time, which speaks to her that he loves work more than her. And she'd, she'd prefer to be poor and have his attention than have lots and never see him. So she complains and she feels hurt and rejected and it feels like their marriage is over. Now, does that sound familiar? You know, these misunderstandings happen all the time in relationships, whether within marriage or uh, as parents and children or, or friendships and even in the work environment. And so understanding these love languages and recognising each other's primary love language really can make a difference. So last week, I picked up on my primary love language, which is words of affirmation. You know, there is power in our words. And so saying I love you or why I love you or, or giving a compliment or an encouragement or expressing gratitude can be the very language that means that someone knows that they are deeply loved. And this week, well, I want to focus on a second love language, that of quality time. And by quality time, I mean giving someone your undivided attention. Now, for some people, they only truly know that they're loved when, like Jen in the TV drama, they experience quality time with the other person. You know, when they're given someone's undivided attention. So over the years, the term quality time has become a bit overused and trite, uh, but actually it can be a very powerful experience. You see, Quality time means that you have to be present. You have to decide that at this moment, this activity or this person uh, is going to receive all my attention. Now, I'm not great at this because I get distracted easily, you know, especially by my phone. And it infuriates Sarah. If, you know, when a text comes in and we're talking, I look down at my phone to see who it's from. It says to her that someone else is more important than her, whereas I think I'm multitasking. <laughs> And boy, the trouble I've got into with this. And I've had conversations with Sarah where I've checked my phone and then missed something really important that Sarah is saying. And then I'm frantically trying to guess what she might have said. I promise you those times don't usually end well for me. But Sarah says it's like me talking to her and then she just picks up a book and starts reading. You know, how would I feel then? To be honest, I have no answer to that. You see, the love language of quality time can be expressed in different ways. It has different dialects. So firstly, quality time usually involves quality conversation. And that means being attentive and listening well. You know, sometimes people value offloading their day, explaining the stresses they've faced, the conversations they've had. And they feel loved when they've been listened to 
and understood. And sometimes that's all that's needed and they feel energized again. Other times offering advice and comment is really helpful. You know, Sarah and I will sometimes say, you know, do you want me to listen and sympathize or offer advice? You know, comfort or solution? Now that sounds a bit naff, I know, uh, but when it's said well, it's really helpful. And avoid interrupting. You know, research has indicated that the average individual listens for 17 seconds before interrupting. You know, Sarah was shocked that it was that long. To be honest, so was I. (laughs) And sometimes we don't want to be interrupted or fixed. We just want to be heard and understood. So creating space for quality time together to really listen to each other without stating our opinion or defending ourselves can be a very powerful and very life-giving. And it's an expression of intimacy and love, which is why it's important to do this with our kids and our parents, our partners and our spouses. And even it's important um, appropriately to do this with work colleagues too. You know, to feel valued and listened to and understood is life-giving. And to some, it's the evidence of our love for them. And quality conversation requires self-revelation too, of sharing our thoughts and feelings. You know, how can people really know and understand us unless we share something of ourselves? And that requires vulnerability about who we are. And again, something I've come to realise is that Sarah is able to describe how she feels and she can articulate her emotions really clearly. And I can't and I just run out of words and it can seem like I'm not willing to share, but sometimes I just don't know how to express it. Now, maybe that's a male issue. You know, uh, a year six experiment, that's 10 year olds, uh, was done on this very issue. They They asked children to give as many words as they could that meant the same as an emotion, such as happiness. And girls scored higher than boys in every single emotion except anger. Boys don't seem to have the emotional vocabulary in the same way that girls do. And if you think about it, men will often say what they think and not how they feel. But actually, it's something that I and us men need to work on. We need to be intentional about noting our emotions and how we're feeling and then being willing to share them. Uh, Otherwise, um, people, you know, people are left frustrated. So quality time involves quality conversation, but it also involves quality activities, too, of doing things together. You know, it's walks, it's date nights, it's going out for meals, it's watching kids on sports day or playing together and reading a bedtime story. It's snuggling up to watch a movie, it's taking, um, taking a colleague out for lunch or, or sitting in the park together or having a one-to-one over coffee. You know, giving time to someone and focusing on them is hard to do in a busy world, but it's not impossible because we all make time for what we value. So giving time to someone shows that we value them and that they, well, they will feel loved because they hear the language of love through that quality time. So you can make this weekend a demonstration of your love to your kids, to your partners, to a friend. So why not switch off your phone for a morning or even a day and give some quality time to someone you love? Quality conversations through focused attention, through listening well, through giving something of yourself to them. And oh, it will be so worth it. So you have a great weekend and do join us actually on Facebook and YouTube on Sunday. We're having part two of our series called Curious, which is basically all about exploring faith. We would love you to join us at half past ten. Hey, many thanks and you stay safe.